Hey guys, it's me, Dax Moy from Fit System Training, uh, Fitness Marketing Made Simple, Personal Training Success Academy, DaxMoy.com, and about a billion gazillion other sites um, that I can't even remember off the top of my own head, as you could tell. Um, I'm here just with a very, very short message. Um, I always say that, don't I? I always say it's going to be a short message and I'm going to ramble on for ages. Right, um, what, what I'm here to talk about today is really this... So, what I'm here to talk about today is the simple, basically I'm going to be covering a series of mistakes that I've made in my business over the years, right? A series of mistakes. Um, and believe me, like, I always, I always kind of half joke and, and half serious that I'm actually the biggest failure I know, okay? I'm serious, I'm one of the biggest failures I know. So many of the things that I've done with my business over the years have gone wrong. So many things have backfired on me, so many things have broken. And yet somehow I've still managed to build myself some very, very successful businesses, do very well for myself and kind of, you know, build a, build a, most importantly, build a lifestyle for myself that is absolutely fantastic. I get to travel a lot. I go to place it, all the places in the world that I want to go to. I get to do things that I want to do. I get to live in luxury accommodation on beaches in Thailand and work with princesses and all kinds of stuff. Right? I've built an absolutely fantastic life for myself. Um, but that said, that fantastic life has come off the back of some serious, serious mistakes across the course of my career. And one of the one of the biggest mistakes I would say that I've made in yeah I mean if I trace it all the way back to the start of my career in fact the biggest mistake that I made was really just diving in and training anybody with a wallet and a pulse okay I call it WAP marketing W A P wallet and a pulse basically if the person had a wallet if the person had a pulse um, they became my client. I wasn't selective at all, um, and ultimately, as long as they could pay me for my services, they had earned the right to come and work with me. And to be honest, that was one of the biggest mistakes I ever made. See, everybody's out there kind of telling you about all of these different ways to get clients really, really easily, right? And go down the Groupon route and kind of do all these, do all these guinea pig trials and all the rest of it. My company runs guinea pig trials, okay? My company still runs guinea pig trials. But what's supposed to happen with the guinea pig trial, what's supposed to happen with the selection of any client that you bring into your company is that really you should be guarding the gateway to yourself, guarding the gateway to your business by saying, is this a person I really, really, really want to give hours of my life to for the next three, six, nine, 12 months, or in my case, kind of three, six, nine, 12 years. You know, we've got clients who've been with us for over 12 years. Um, I've got clients who've been with me for over 12 years. And... So the biggest mistake I ever made was making myself available to everybody. Um, pretty much, if you could pay for me, you could come and work with me. And it was the equivalent of being a fitness hooker, right? As long as you had money in your hand and you were willing to pay me for my hour's time, I would go and work with you. But the trouble is, those people steal your passion and they steal your purpose and they, they steal all of your personal power. Like, everything that you love about your work disappears when you just give it away for free. Okay, and that, that can go and go back it or give it away for free. Give it away even for money, and I can go back to that that hookering thing, right? Kind of you give it give it away too often for money, then you know you end up not feeling very good about yourself. Well, I didn't feel very good about myself in my business. Um, I didn't feel good about the fact that I had people there that didn't value my time, that didn't value my expertise, that didn't value um, that didn't value the fact that I was putting a lot of work into their success. And they weren't, at the very least, matching that work. Okay, so, and perhaps you feel the same way too. Maybe, maybe it feels to you like you've got clients that you are, you can, you're more concerned about their success than they are. You give everything. You, you're, you're concerned about what they're eating and how they're training and how they're sleeping, their supplementation, and you put together all the plans and all the worksheets, and you, and you do all the nutrition plans, and you give them the journals, and next time they come in, you speak to them and say, "Hey, did you? How are you getting on with that thing?" They go, "Meh." Kind of didn't do it, you know, and haven't gotten around to it yet. I'll have a look at it next week. Next week, you say, how are you getting on? Yeah. Right. And you've done this, not only with this client, again and again and again, and tried to find different ways to motivate them, but you've also done it with a 100 other clients across the course of your career. And now you start to get to the point where you're scratching your head, and you're, you're losing heart, and you're thinking, shit, why am I doing this? Okay? So the biggest mistake I ever made was making it easy to work with me. That's the biggest mistake I ever made. The best way to build a really stunning business, one where 
clients value you and value you in terms of every every sense of that word and including value you enough to pay you your full value, right? The best way to make sure that happens is to be as selective as you possibly can bring the client in. And that means being a fussy coach. That means that means saying, if you won't do these things, I'm not in a position to work with you. If you won't do these things, I'm not in a position to work with you. If you agree to these things and you stop doing them, then I'm afraid I'm not going to be in a position to work with you. And so many coaches are terrified of this. So many coaches are like, I can't start telling my clients these things because they just won't work with me. That's crap. That's absolute crap. You know, it's just how you put the information across. Now, if you and I sit down in a consultation and I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm Dax Moy, I'm damned amazing, you're really lucky to be here, um, you know, kind of, you mess me about, screw you, you're out the door, then of course people aren't going to take to that. But if, you, if you're just, you know, really honest and say, look, I'm not interested just in getting your money. I'm not interested in you coming here every week, sticking £50 per hour in, into my hand and and not getting anything. I want every single pound that you spend with me, every single dollar that you spend with me, to be one that comes back to you tenfold. I want you to think think to yourself, wow, I really, really got an amazing experience here. I've got amazing results. And because you know, because you're you're getting amazing experience, amazing results, you feel that you just want to keep going, right? Now if if you tell the person that kind of story that you really, really care about them enough to not take them on if you're going to set them up to fail. If you're, if you're not going to be able to do the work that you most want to be able to do with them, they're not going to see you as arrogant and conceited and they're not going to see you as somebody who's, who's full of yourself. What they're going to say is, wow, I finally found the person who really and truly wants me to be a success. And most coaches aren't doing that. So most coaches are letting themselves get pushed around by clients who are coming and saying, no, I'm not doing that and you can't make me do that and I won't do that. Okay. Well, look, I'm not here to tell you how to run your business, but it, it, when I look back on the darkest days of my business, the days when I, I really thought I was going to get out of the industry altogether, it was when I was hookering myself to my clients, when I was telling, when I was letting them tell me how I was going to run my business. So here's, here's the kind of the mental framework I want you to take. You've paid for your courses, you've paid for your certifications, you've paid for all your ongoing training, you're buying your books, you're sitting down with your books, you're reading them, you're studying, you're getting better and better and better and better and better, right? You are now the expert in your field. Surely you should have a mindset that when the client comes to work with you, you say, yes, Mrs. Jones, I know that you would like to do that thing. Um, but here, let me tell you that, how do you feel about this? And this is actually something, something that I say to people that, that come at me with like an attitude about they want to do things. They'll say, to, they'll say, yeah, but I don't want to do that. I want to do it this way. And I'll say, right, are you doing it that way at the moment? And they'll say, well, yeah, because that's, that's why I want to carry on doing it. And I'll say, so how is that working for you? How is that working for you? See, your clients wouldn't be coming to sit and uh, coming coming to sit in your consultation room with you, and seek a personal trainer if their own methods were currently working, would they? And sometimes it's as simple as reminding them that and saying, "Look, your method's not working for you. It really isn't working for you." Or, or maybe even ask them, "Is it how do you feel your method is working for you?" And they go, "Well, actually, it's not. Are you willing to try something new?" And you should only really take on your clients if they are willing to try something new. And if they're so stuck in their old ways that they go, no, I want you to train me the way my old trainer did it, even though the way their old trainer did it didn't really get them results, right? If you're not willing, if you're not willing to actually take that stand and actually find those things out, then don't be surprised that you've got clients who are coming in and they're not valuing you and they're making your life hard and you're working all the hours God sends and you're, you're having to fight with them over things like cancellation. All of this kind of stuff should be sorted out up front. You know, tell people up front, I'm really, really sorry. You know, it's, this is how we work. If, if you cancel me, it's going to cost you. If, you. if you don't do the work, it's going to cost you because I'm going to fire you as a client. Be honest with people. You don't have to be brutal, but you can be honest. And by being honest, what you do is you create a sense of value around you. It's like, wow, when you go to work with Dax, you can't mess about. This is what he expects of you. And therefore, they value your time. They value your expertise. So, look, I mean... You know, I could go around, go around on this for ages. I think you get, the, you get the point though. Just be more selective with your clients. Don't be scared to have your business and your life on your terms. Right? You are there to serve a client, but you're not their servant in the truest sense. Right? You serve them best by giving them what they need, not, to, not just what they tell you. You know, they snap their fingers and say, right, you've got to do this thing and I want it done that way. That's not how it should work. And certainly the biggest mistake I made was thinking that that was how I had to work in the early stages. So I hope this has been useful for you. At the very least, I hope it's been a bit of a thought provoker for about how, you know, some of the things that you might want to start thinking about for your business. Um, got a lot more of these coming, um, a, lot, a lot of short videos. And 
we're you know whilst I'm talking to you about it here at the at FEB we're with John Latoc this May we are going to be covering so much of this in real practical terms like this is what you do this is what you say this is how you go about this this is the system that you use to implement this and we'll be be covering this and more I mean the topics that we're going to take you through and the actual practical way of using it using that information is going to blow your mind so um, you know I don't know if you've had a look at the FE, FEB page uh, the fitness entrepreneur boot, boot camp but if you haven't had a look at it just yet I suggest you get your butt over there and uh, and take a look okay so the links beneath this video and I will speak to you again very very soon take care